Hey, what's up gamers? It's your boy Jans here. Hope you guys are having a blessed day or night. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best OBS settings uh, for streaming and recording on Warzone. I will be talking about the most optimized output settings to try to maximize your FPS while gaming. And then I'm also going to end the video talking about two tips and tricks that I use to put out high quality content. All right, with that being said, let's get into it. The first thing y'all are gonna wanna do is go into the OBS Studio properties and check the Run This Program as an admin box. This will put the app at a higher priority, allowing for less glitch frames and less lag. Now let's open the settings menu within the OBS application. As for general settings, these are pretty basic. Uh, I don't think I changed much on this tab, so if you guys want, you can just copy my settings from below. Next, let's talk about the most underrated section, the stream tab. If you wanna make sure you have a stable server and not get sent to various servers before streaming, I highly suggest you download the Twitch test program in the description below. After you download, open the bandwidth test and enter your stream key into the box above and select the region where you're from. For me, I live in the US, so I would click the North America region and then just click the start button. Now the program will measure your upload speed to each individual Twitch server and you can pick the best server that has a combination of the highest quality rating, low latency and best bandwidth. My results signal that the Chicago Illinois 2 option is the most dependable server, so I would go ahead and select that server within the OBS program. Alright, let's move on to the streaming output tab. If you haven't already, switch your output mode to advanced so we can do some more in-depth tuning. So for the audio track and the Twitch VOD track, I just had the first track selected, not too complicated. Next we have the encoder, and I would definitely suggest that you have your GPU do this, as your CPU, or X264, is likely to be overwhelmed um, because you're on a CPU intensive game like Warzone so we just stick with Nvidia NVENC for the encoder. Next is rescale output and most of the time I wouldn't change this because if you're doing a lot of video editing, uh, getting videos from streams, you're going to have to change the resolution output each time and that may get very repetitive. I've tried using rescale output to test FPS while streaming and recording uh, but I found the difference with and without it is marginal. Next up we got the encoder settings for streaming. You want the rate control to be CBR as this is a constant bitrate. You don't want variations in our bitrates as when we're rendering our video in our editing software it may cause an error, especially in Adobe After Effects. In addition, we want our bitrate to be about 7400 to 7500 kilobits per second. Twitch states in their broadcasting guidelines that 8000 kilobits per second is recommended. However, you can surpass this value up to 8000 kilobits per second. Although some streamers have reported that their stream couldn't go live if they didn't drop their bitrate to 7750 kilobits per second, so I just stick to 7400 kilobits per second to be safe. If you want more information on this, I will attach a Reddit link in the description below. Anyways, we are going to put the keyframe interval to 2 seconds and the preset to max quality if you have a high-end graphics card. The profile should also be set to high to put OBS at high priority. The look ahead should be unchecked and we will check the cycle visual tuning feature. Set the GPU value to 0 and the max B frames value to 2. Next, let's check out the recording output tab. I suggest setting the recording path to your videos folder on your C drive, but it's totally preference. The recording format should be MP4 as most editing programs prefer this file format and we will select the first two audio tracks unless you have more than two. The encoder we will keep the same as the streaming section and leave rescale output, custom muxer settings, and automatic file splitting unchecked. Also, we are going to keep the CBR as the rate control, however, we are changing the bitrate to 40,000. This is the ideal bitrate to use, and my reasoning for this is the empirical data found on Tech Guide's video on YouTube, where he finds the best bitrate for the best video quality on YouTube. I will link the video in the description below if you want to learn more, or if you're recording at a resolution higher than 1080p. Moving forward, the keyframe interval should be set to 0 seconds, and we are keeping the preset to max quality and the profile still set to high. Again, like before, uncheck the look ahead and check mark the cycle visual tuning. Set the GPU value to 0 and the max B frames to 2. The audio bitrate should be set to 256, but you should check that your audio interface buffer size matches the audio bitrate. Next up we got replay buffer, and if you're not always recording or streaming, you can always enable this to record a past set time as long as your replay buffer is on. 
I have my replay time set to record the past two minutes of my gameplay, but you can have it to record the past 20 minutes of your gameplay if you want to do that route. And then I have my save replay hotkey as my down arrow, but you can always change this as well within the hotkey section, which I will be explaining later. Now let's head to the audio tab. Here we will set the sample rate to your audio interface sample rate, which is typically 48 kilohertz. Keep the channels to stereo and set your desktop audio to your headphones or your out port. Your mic audio should also be set to your desired mic or or audio imports and then we're going to leave the rest of the audio settings to their default values. Next up we got the video section and the base resolution or canvas should be set to your monitor's resolution. My monitor is the XG27 AQM 1440p monitor but most of you will probably set this to 1920 by 1080p. Then for the output resolution this is what your viewers will see on YouTube so I would just set this at 1920 by 1080p and then I would set the downscale filter to Lanxos, as long as you have a high-end graphics card. We will also set the FPS value to 60 frames per second, as this is more smoother for the viewer to watch. Next up, we got the hotkey section, and the only thing I changed in my hotkey section was the replay buffer hotkey, um, but I rarely use this feature because I'm always recording or streaming. In addition, you shouldn't have to change any of the accessibility features unless you are colorblind or have trouble seeing certain things. And then finally, we have the advanced section. Set the process priority to high because this will set aside more resources for OBS. I would copy my video section to get the most color vibrance out of your gameplay. Recording should remain at default, however the stream delay section is very important. Make sure you enable this and set the duration to 1 second or as low as it can possibly go so you don't have any latency between when you see the Twitch chat and talking to the actual viewer. If this value is too high, you might not interact with your viewers on a timely basis. In addition, enable automatically reconnect stream and set the retry delay to one second with the maximum retries of 25 times, just in case your Wi-Fi goes out for like a split second or even a second. Network, sources, and hotkeys can remain at their default settings. All right, now that I talked about all the OBS settings, I wanna give you new streamers or content creators two tips that I use while using the OBS platform. Tip number one, make sure your gameplay audio peaks at around negative 20 decibels on the OBS audio meter. Along with that, your microphone shouldn't peak past negative 9 decibels and shouldn't go lower than negative 22 decibels when you're speaking your quietest on stream. This will ensure that your gameplay isn't too loud and your voice isn't too quiet for viewers to hear. Tip number two, use the Docs tab to manage chat, Twitch stats, and activity feed and also use the stats feature within the OBS platform. The stats pop-up window is very crucial and it can inform you that your CPU, GPU, or network are performing negatively. You can then adjust settings lower afterwards so your hardware performs well again. Thank you all for watching and if you did find value in this video, make sure to click that like button and subscribe and notifications on if you want more content like this. I hope this helps you with your content creation journey using OBS. All right, peace out, Jans fam.